How's it going everyone? I'm Not Bay, bringing you another Smash discussion. It has been quite a while since I've done one of these, and that's because there hasn't been anything I wanted to go in depth on. But now I gotta cover not one, but two major topics for Smash Ultimate. Steve Ban stuff, and the first official tier list. I'm gonna start with Steve, and then we'll make our way to the tier list. I highly recommend you watch both of the sections for the video, but if you're in a rush and don't care about one of the sections, here are the timestamps for each topic of interest. But let's get started. In case you're unaware, a tech for Steve has just been discovered that allows him to cancel hit stun and knockback of any move that doesn't put him into tumble, potentially leading to some nasty reversal combos. Now, the discussion of Steve and whether or not he should be banned is nothing new. I made a video about this last year. But this time, it's a bit different, mostly because multiple regions have flat out banned him in response to this tech's discovery. There is a lot to unpack here, and much like the previous ban debate, there is no objectively correct decision. All we can do is have healthy, civil conversations about the logistics surrounding this tech. So what does Friendly Neighborhood Not Bay think about this tech? Well, for one, I think it's pretty clear that we need a central entity to make decisions like these, because this is a mess. In Valorant, if the dev team said something is too strong, they ban it or come up with a fix. The fact that the Smash community is a bunch of different regions trying to make decisions for the vast majority is pretty brutal, and ultimately is not going to solve anything. What happens if NA bans Steve while Japan keeps him legal? What rule set are we going to follow for international tournaments? Whether it comes from Nintendo or some group of TOs, we really need an official rules committee to take a vote and end this nonsense. That's the high level issue for me, but what about the tech specifically? If you remember from the last video, I mentioned how I didn't believe there was sufficient evidence that proved Steve was OP and worthy of a ban, and for the most part, I stand by that statement. Steve is a crazy strong character with a strong claim for the number one spot but we've seen top players beat Steve time and time and time again, and I still don't think Steve is ban-worthy. But this tech absolutely is. I've already gone over what is and isn't ban-worthy in my opinion, but in short, I think the moment a character or mechanic is uncounterable and starts to undermine the basic functionality of the game is when it should be banned. And unfortunately, this tech breaks the core concepts of combos and hit stun. Both hit stun and knockback are key mechanics in Smash that determine what is and isn't a combo, and the fact that Steve is the only character that can bypass this check without any repercussion is messed up. The tech really pushes what is and is not okay to exist in a tournament setting. Now look, I get that the easiest solution is to ban Steve outright. You don't have to keep a close eye on every set that has a Steve, and would get rid of a character that is already on thin ice with the community. But that's all this fix is, the easy one. Steve was not over-centralizing before the tech, nor was he winning an overwhelming number of tournaments. And I think it's silly to ban a not OP character because of one potentially OP tech. A comparable example in real sports is basketball. In the 1950s, George Mikan was considered the best, most overpowered basketball player in the NBA. Standing at 6 foot 10 inches, the Lakers' whole strategy was to camp Mikan under the rim and block every shot the opposing team threw up. And because there wasn't a goaltending rule, there was no reason for Mikan not to just stand under the rim. He was quite literally overpowered and the only player in the game that could utilize this strategy. This resulted in some of the lamest games of basketball the world has ever seen. I mean, look at this scoreline. So what did the NBA do? Well, they didn't ban George for using the strategy, nor did they ban the Lakers for implementing it. Rather, they banned the tech itself by implementing a goaltending rule, awarding the offense with points if the ball was interfered with on its descent. That was a long-winded example, but I think it sets a good plan to follow. Let's try banning the technique before we start banning entire characters. Heck, we've seen this within the Smash scene, in multiple games. Wobbling is banned while Ice Climbers are legal, and Peach Side B stalling is banned while both Peach and stages with walls remain playable. Now obviously these techniques are much easier to track, but we've had some annoying statistics to track in our history. Do you think melee TOs like monitoring a ledge grab limit? What about in Brawl where they had an airtime rule to stop people from camping? Or what about determining what is excessively stalling? Look, I'm not ruling out the possibility of a Steve ban, and maybe we will fully ban him in the future. Heck, it's entirely possible there's no feasible way for us to track if a Steve player is using this technique. But I think it's on us as a community to at least try and see where it takes us. If it were up to me, I would implement a ban of the tech first, 
and if it proves to be too difficult to track, then we consider banning the character. I'm not saying people are dumb for wanting Steve to be banned, what I am saying is it's excessive to fully ban a character without even attempting a workaround. So yeah, don't ban Steve yet, ban this bullshit instead. On to the tier list. Recently, a Twitter account by the name of UltRank worked with 71 top players from various regions to create Smash Ultimate's first official tier list. I'm not going to go into specifics as to how the characters were ranked, but if you are interested in that, the article explaining everything is linked in the Twitter page and in this video's description. I highly recommend you give it a read. So what do I think of the tier list? Overall, I like it. I think from a tier placement perspective, there isn't much that I hard disagree with. Obviously, I can nitpick a lot of things, I think Pikachu out of top 10 is a little weird, but the vast majority of characters are in the tiers I would personally put them in, so instead of pointing out every mini disagreement of mine, I'm going to talk about the big things that I agree or disagree with. And I'll talk about the Mewtwo placement because obviously I have an obligation to do so. First off, I love this Shulk placement. I get that he's not as popular as other characters in top tier, but that shouldn't take away from what he's capable of. Shulk is incredibly strong, and I'm glad that most top players still recognize how scary he is, despite the lack of representation. The Marth placement has been getting a lot of hate, but again, I really like it. I feel like people severely underrate Marth because Lucina is in the game, and look, I understand why. There's virtually no reason to using him over Lucina from a tournament perspective, but the lack of use shouldn't take away from the fact that he's Lucina with worse damage output and potential for really early kills. Lucina has been a strong character in Ultimate from day one, and I disagree that Marth's lack of damage output should put him anywhere close to bottom tier. But enough of what I agree with, it's time to dunk on some of these takes. Cloud is not top 10. Honestly, they should have just put Spargo's face on this tier list instead of Cloud because that's the only reason he's that high. I'm not denying that Cloud is a strong character, but the fact that he's ranked higher than Wolf, Diddy, Pikachu, and Palutena is wild. I personally would have put him in A tier, I could live with him being in the bottom of S tier. But there is no way in hell he's top 10. The high and mid tier I'm mostly fine with. I think you can make arguments for Falcon and Ness being in A, but that's not the worst thing ever. The C tier is a mess. How the hell is Wii Fit Trainer in low tier? Like, am I playing a different game? That character has combos, camping, speed, planking, literally anything you could want in a good character. I have to believe she's down here because the top representatives don't travel. The fact that she's in the same tier as DK and Bowser Jr. is whack. Speaking of DK, I don't know what's changed, but that character is absolutely bottom 10. You all know I'm a DK hater, and I get that I'm biased, but seeing how hard he struggles to regain neutral is so traumatizing that you cannot convince me that he's anything higher than D tier. DK hate aside, the bottom 10 is fine. Again, there are some mini swaps within the tier I would make, but this is about what I would expect. Though for being real, Ganondorf deserves his own tier. And then we get to Mewtwo. Our failed science experiment is officially bottom 20. So what do I think about this? Well, for one, the placement doesn't really surprise me. While not saying it outright, a lot of this tier list is results based, and since Mewtwo doesn't have a lot of results, it makes sense why he's placed so low. Do I agree with this placement? Absolutely not. This probably goes for most characters, but I think people judge Mewtwo on his weaknesses without considering what he's good at. Virtually every matchup chart I see puts Mewtwo as a winning matchup and only talks about his tail, big body, and low weight. When it's not that simple. I'm not denying Mewtwo has weaknesses, but there's more to the character than lol tail. I can't remember the last time I've heard a non-Mewtwo main talk about his incredible combo game, crazy ledge trapping, neutral defining shadow ball, command grab to pressure platforms, and so, so much more. Ultimate is a game defined by advantage and neutral, and I would argue Mewtwo is one of the strongest in both of those aspects. I personally put him in the bottom of A tier top of B, but I am clearly biased on the matter so I'll leave it at that. End of the day, this is the closest thing we have to the perfect tier list, and for that I'm happy it exists. And even if you disagree with where your main is ranked, keep in mind this placement doesn't really matter, all things considered. This tier list does not make a character stronger or worse. Mewtwo is going to have the same tools regardless of whether he's ranked high or low tier. What's important is how you play, and push your main to their limits. Because if we're keeping it 100, every character except Ganondorf has good results. 
Virtually every single character has potential to make a splash at the top level. I just talked trash about DK and Hikaru got third with him at a European major. As long as you have the drive and passion to play this game at a high level, there's no limit to what you can do with your character. And with that, thank you for watching, hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you all next time.